Uh, we're here for a particular purpose, but I'd like to first begin by acknowledging the the families whose lives were disrupted yes this past weekend uh, from this horrific shooting that occurred in Gilroy where three individuals a six-year-old a 13 year old and a 20 something year old uh, were gunned down killed 12 others injured um, we've seen this type of senseless violence too many times in this country too many <clears throat> too many times here in California and at least we know in California we're taking steps every day to try to curb this type of senseless violence that takes our loved ones from us. Uh, it is heartbreaking. My thoughts and prayers go out to the families of the victims. Uh, my thanks to the law enforcement personnel who responded, especially the Gilroy Police Department, uh, but any number of law enforcement agencies are now involved, including the Department of Justice, where we're helping out as well. It is uh, something that we've become accustomed to, unfortunately, but it is important to recognize the victims and express our condolences, uh, to thank the first responders. And it's important here, too, as well in California, to say something because we do take action. We don't just sit around and spectate when things like this occur. California is the leader in this nation when it comes to forward-thinking, sensible gun safety measures that we take. Uh, we'll find out more details as the investigation of this incident uh, move forward. But I can tell you that uh, when it comes to the use of assault weapons, California has taken action. And we do all we can to try to prevent these types of, of senseless incidents from occurring that take loved ones from us. I also want to mention that they are, uh, law enforcement authorities are still seeking information on the potential of other perpetrators or people involved in this incident. And I urge anyone who may have information, however faint or related it might be to you, uh, to please contact law enforcement authorities. Probably the best folks to contact are the people, the good people at the Gilroy Police Department. Their phone number, by the way, is area code 408. 846-0583. Gun violence kills, it changes lives, and it devastates communities. And we must do all we can to prevent these types of incidents. <clears throat> By the way, um, about one in every seven Americans, whatever your political stripe is, believe we should have sensible restrictions on firearms. Uh, and in California, I think that number probably would be greater, and certainly we have acted. But if there's ever a time for a scream for our national leaders to do something, uh, how much louder must we yell? But every time, it seems like the gun lobby gets in the way, and certainly in Congress, I experienced that for 24 years. And it doesn't, wouldn't surprise me if they st step up and become a roadblock to sensible national gun safety measures as well. Uh, here in California, they try to do what they can to stop us. Uh, I could give you the names of any number of cases where we are up against the gun lobby trying to protect what California has done and trying to move forward. Whether it's protecting our uh, California Assault Weapons Control Act that we passed back in 1989. Whether it's the defense that we're engaged in right now in court on the ban on large capacity magazines that we're being sued by the gun lobby against, uh, or whether it's lawsuit against Proposition 63, which we passed recently, which requires ammunition sales to now undergo background checks and uh, registration. Or it could be the common sense regulations that we have in place when, a, when it speaks to the ability of an individual to carry a firearm, whether openly or not. Uh, we're going to continue to implement and defend California's laws. And we know that it's time for our national leaders to come up with real solutions at a national level as well. And so Gilroy has occurred, and the fight now goes on to make sure that other communities don't experience what Gilroy and so many other American communities have experienced. Uh, we're here actually today to discuss a very important settlement that uh, the Department of Justice here in California has reached. 
I want to acknowledge the people who've worked hard on making something like this possible. Uh, in no particular order, I'm going to mention some of the people who are here who have made the work that we're announcing today possible. Melanie fontes Rayner, who is a special assistant with, for me here at the Department of Justice. Uh, Ellie Bloom, who is also a special assistant uh, uh, attorney general with me here. Cheryl Johnson, who, who is the deputy attorney general and chiefly will respond to any particular questions you might have about this particular case. On behalf of Kathleen Foote, the senior assistant attorney general is Mike Jorgensen. Uh, and also with me is someone who has helped work on the legislative side to make sure we pass good measures to help us with our enforcement powers. Renica George, uh, deputy attorney general, who is here with us as well. Um, there are several, several other people on the team that have made this possible. I want to say thank you to everyone who's worked on this set of cases uh, in the past. Almost one in two Americans uh, right now are taking prescription drug medic medicines. Of those who rely on those medications, one in four say it's getting difficult to afford them. And one in 10 of those individuals are skipping doses as the cost of those drugs continues to increase and they try to make ends meet. <clears throat> Unfortunately and outrageously, it seems that inflated drug prices have become common news. Uh, whether it's the insulin prices rising from $175 a vial to almost $1,500 a vial in 15 years, or whether it's the news about one of the lowlifes of America, Martin Screlly, raising the price of a 62-year-old drug, uh, Daraprim, from $13.50 a tablet to over $750 a tablet overnight, a $5,000 increase in a critical drug for uh, some people, $5,000 a uh, 5,000 percent increase overnight. No one, no one in America should be forced to skip or ration doses of medicine that they need, especially if one of the reasons that you're doing the rationing or skipping that dosage that you need is because you can't afford the medication that's been prescribed for you by your doctor. And certainly not because a drug company is colluding to keep the price of your drug artificially high, even when cheaper options could be available. But that's what's happening. Brand name drug companies are illegally paying companies that create the generic version of that drug and more affordable version of that drug. They are colluding with these generic drug companies to keep that lower cost drug, that version of the brand name drug off of the market. We're calling what they do pay for delay. And they reach these agreements where they pay a company to delay the release of a generic drug that does the same thing as a brand name drug because by delaying, it continues the ability of that brand name company to market exclusively that drug at higher prices. Today we're announcing four settlements, four settlement agreements amounting to nearly $70 million in payments to the state by Teva, Endo Pharmaceuticals, and Tokaku uh, drug companies. Our lawsuit deals with their pay for delayed agreements and their actions that have been taken to keep drugs that Americans need off the market. These settlements include the largest pay for delay settlement received by any state in the nation and are also the only ones to secure injunctive relief for a state against future pay for delay agreements. Hard to believe that this is the first time that a state has been able to take a drug company to court, reach a settlement where in the future these companies agree not to engage in those types of collusive uh, behaviors. The first settlement 
of these four addresses the delayed entry of Provigil, a generic narcolepsy drug kept from entering the market for almost six years. Teva used these pay-for-delay agreements to its benefit, while California patients had fewer affordable choices in the market. Those agreements allowed Teva, one of the world's largest manufacturers of generic medicine, to illegally maintain a monopoly over Provigil sales between 2006 and 2012, keeping costs artificially high for people who relied on this medication. In this settlement, we've secured $69 million for California and a 10-year injunction prohibiting Teva from entering into pay-for-delay agreements. This settlement creates a consumer fund for all those California residents to be compensated for their purchase of that drug, Provigil, in the past. Consumers who have been affected by these prices can learn more about the details of this settlement by going to our website at oag.doj.ca.gov slash antitrust slash provigil settlement. If you believe you are a victim of Teva's alleged misconduct, we urge you to file a form available on our website at that uh, website that I mentioned. The other settlements with Teva and Endo Pharmaceuticals and uh, Tokoku address similar practices related to the drug Lidoderm, a patch to relieve shingle pain. We alleged in this lawsuit that Teva had a series of pay-for-delay agreements with Endo Pharmaceuticals that prevented a generic version from entering the market for almost two years. In addition to the injunction prohibiting Teva from entering into pay-for-delay agreements, our settlement related to Lidoderm also prohibits Endo Pharmaceuticals and uh, Taikoku from entering uh, into further pay-for-delay agreements for several years. These illegal collusive agreements that drug companies enter into not only burden communities and our loved ones, but force every Californian to shoulder higher prices for life-saving prescription drugs. These aren't purchases people can skip for a month when they don't uh, fit into their budget. And so we have to do what we can to make sure that people have access to the medication that their doctors prescribe to them. I also want to mention legislation that's working its way through the legislature as we speak. Legislation, uh, it is uh, AB 824 by Assemblymember Jim Wood. This legislation would help curb the pay-for-delay practices that we see by drug companies. It would increase enforcement capabilities uh, for the Department of Justice to go after these bad actors, and it would help us when it comes to these settlements that you've seen here today. We need to stop these types of deals before we have to go and sue these companies in court. This bill would make California the first state in the nation to work to prevent pharmaceutical companies from making these backroom deals. Together, whether it's our enforcement actions or this legislative action, all of this together will help us push back on drug companies and fight for California families. And so we're here to say through this settlement, no more. If there's a life-saving drug, an indispensable, indispensable medication that our family members need, they should have access to it. And no one should be able to put their greed in front of our, our loved one's health and well-being. With that, we'll take any questions you might have.